Hi there, Richard the Dick Coughlin, 666, how are you? Now, why are we all different colours? You see, a little while ago I made a video called Yelling at a Racist Twat, and there was a response to that video by a user who I've encountered and even made a video about before. I can't pronounce his name, but it's basically pro-life vegan spelt backwards with the word, with the number one on it and of course that phrase there pro-life vegan just makes you think this guy's ready to party he made a video talking about how the white race is dying out now apart from the fact that if you're not racist you don't care about that because you acknowledge that skin color is meaningless I thought I would do a video trying to explain why we are all different colors and I'm gonna do something I don't normally do I'm gonna go into the realm of science the most striking thing about humans is we are all different colours. There are white people and black people and brown people and pink, pink. Now, if you look at any diagram, any sort of map that depicts the uh, the different ethnicities or skin colours across the globe, you will notice that there are more people of darker skin around the equator area of the middle of the planet. There are less of them up here. Up here, it is mainly white. What causes this variation? Well, many theories have been suggested, including sexual selection for different skin tones in different places. Because of the strong correlation between skin pigmentation and the amount of sunlight, biologists have suggested that this is a result of natural selection imposed by different light levels in different parts of the world. Links to all these sources and stuff you can research below. The idea that pigmentation evolved as an adaptation to light levels is supported by facultative, facultative changes in pigmentation that occur with higher exposure, that is, tanning. Light-skinned people get darker when exposed to more sun. These differences among populations represent almost certainly more than one evolutionary event. Even though we don't have fossil skin from our African hominin ancestors like Homo erectus, it's likely that they were dark as are African populations now. But even earlier populations may have been lighter. If you look at our closest relatives, chimps and gorillas, you'll see that their skin pigment, obviously under all the hair, is actually lighter because it is unpigmented. Only the exposed parts of their skin have any pigment at all. The ancestral skin of humans, therefore, was more than likely light colored. And then, as we became naked apes, ooh, look at you, we evolved into a darker shade. So, it's speculated scientifically that the white race has already died out once. Then, as the presumably dark-skinned uh, elements of our population moved into areas like the Middle East and Europe, they evolved lighter skin colour because it was no longer necessary. But when those populations colonised, say, Australia, it became dark again. This almost certainly happened too when humans moved across to Northern America. Those populations that reached Central and South America likely re-evolved their dark pigmentation. So what were the selective processes that caused this dark pigmentation of the skin? What caused these changes? I am going to tell you. I used to accept the idea, the classic story, if you will, that many of us have heard and many of us have probably taught in school, that populations that get more sunlight evolve darker skin as a protection against UV rays and melanoma and the toxic effects of too much vitamin D3 which is produced only by sunlight striking the skin. In low light areas, skin evolved a lighter shade because we need a fair amount of vitamin D3 to build strong bone. Thus, dark skinned ancestors had a reduced amount of vitamin D3 toxicity and fewer melanomas. This could cause differential mortality or reproduction that would explain the differences in pigmentation. The problem with this story is it's just a story. Although this scenario does sound plausible, there really wasn't much hard evidence supporting it, at least not years ago when we were all in school. Well, apart from that, most of you probably are. I'm going to leave a link to a paper written by two scientists called Nina Jablonski and George Chaplin. They've managed to summarize the latest evidence and come to some different conclusions about the evolution of human skin color. Their findings are thus. Sunburn and skin cancer have negligible effects on the reproductive success. Non-melanoma skin cancers are common in older individuals from modern lightly pigmented populations inhabiting sunny climes, but they are rarely fatal or incapacitating. Melanoma afflicts younger individuals and is often fatal, but is much rarer than non-melanoma skin cancer. They also point out that most forms of human skin cancer result from light-skinned individuals 
being moving to the tropics, something that wouldn't have occurred in our ancestors. They conclude that the effects of skin cancer on reproductive success are very minor in humans today and were probably statistically inconsequential before rapid long distance travel and migration. Jablonski and Chaplin also dis, uh, criticized the idea that too much vitamin D was another selective force. They say that, and I quote, overproduction of vitamin D was refuted as the primary cause of evolution of dark skin pigmentation by the discovery that hypervitamosis D due to sun exposure is physiologically impossible because of photochemical regulation. Now this was all news to me. No one told me. But I think it's an important issue and we should, remain t we should maintain it. I'll leave a link to the paper in the bar. You can go and check that one out. If it's not skin cancer or hypervitaminosis, then what are the selective pressures? They suggest that it's a quantity of folate or folic acid. In a paper published in 2000, Jablonski and Chaplin did float this idea around. But in the paper I've linked below, they specifically mentioned that an absence of folate could cause neural tube defects in human embryos serving as a potent selective pressure. But why are populations experiencing less solar radiation lighter? Well, it's pretty much accepted that selection is based on a need for vitamin D3, which not only builds bones, but helps with the immune system, cell proliferation, and the functioning of the brain and heart, and all the other unnecessary bollocks. And since folate is produced in the epidermis and the dermis, it's possible that people in colder climates did get lighter in order to ensure that they get adequate amounts of this important vitamin. But again, this evidence is not conclusive. But then what is? The strongest evidence for this was in a 2000, was in a 2000 paper which showed that recent dark-skinned immigrants from tropical to temporal areas tend to suffer from vitamin D deficiencies. Jablonski and Chaplin also suggest that tanning was an adaptation that uh, occurred not to protect long-distance human migrants, since they didn't exist during, the, during our ancestors' time, but to protect populations at intermediate latitude, where there is much greater seasonal variation and UV. However, again, all these ideas are slightly tentative. Studying the adaptive significance of human skin color and human racial variation is difficult for two specific reasons. Firstly, we can't do experiments on human beings except for medically related ones like giving a pregnant woman folic acid. We certainly can't just move people wholesale and then see if we can check out the connections as they evolve and go through time of them and their traits and their fitness. Although we can do that to some cases with fortuitous migrants. However, fruit flies happen to be larger in northern areas than they are in more tropical ones. And we can actually do experiments on these fruit flies and show that large body size evolves in, lab in the laboratory when fruit flies are brought up in cold conditions. The other problem, of course, is that the, st the traits distinguishing human beings evolved many, 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 many thousands of years ago. And we can only speculate about selective forces from all those thousands of years ago. That said, the geographic uh, distribution of UV hasn't really changed much since then. It's curious but very understandable that we know very little about the evolution of population differentials in our own species. We do know a little bit about skin color, but as for things like nose shape, hair texture, eye folds, and body build, all the other traits that distinguish human populations, our ignorance is a little bit too deep. So yes, I actually agree with the statement. Yes, there are less white people in the world because Here's the other problem. As the planet gets hotter and hotter and hotter, humans are more than likely going to have to adapt like we did before. And that is why we don't have to worry too much about the white people going off because it doesn't matter. Because ultimately, it's just the fucking way you are. Oh, wait. You don't believe in evolution, do you? Damn, I just wasted my time. Oh. Richard Dick Coffin, 666. Good night, may God be less. Uh, I'm going to go have some blancmange.